<laughs> for your time. Uh, next one is John Hislop on the Tim Peake effect, part one from this morning. Right. I hate Bill Gates. <laughs> I love Google. This is on the Google Drive. I saved it onto that just in case. Right. Okay. Um, this is the story of how hundreds of school children tracked the little fun cube satellite, found out about space and Tim's mission, and loved it. Okay. Uh, I'm a retired physics teacher. I'm chairman of the Hildestone Radio Club and I'm a STEM ambassador. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Right, there's a cursor there. Get the cursor. Right, there was a time before Tim, before Tim launched, when it was quiet. The FunCube satellite was launched 32 months ago. And as you can see, it's got um, silver. Is it really silver? No, not really silver, no. <laughs> silver colour and uh, black panels. So the idea was schools could use this instead of the Leslie Cube. Ah, remember that from your days? Yeah, no, okay, yeah. Yeah, do you remember that? Yep. Old fashioned. 21st century, yeah. So, um, yeah. So on the Fun Cube satellite, you've got uh, the temperature of the um, of the uh, two panels uh, being measured, and the data sent down to Earth, so the children can see uh, about heat radiation, because um, if you look at the uh, GCSE syllabus specification, it's starting up in September this year. So all the teachers. Uh, uh, not on holiday, they're preparing their courses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, and um, getting ready for the new curriculum. Now, if you go to the um, AQA or OCR or Edixo or any of the uh, um, exam boards and look at the specification for physics, on second thoughts, don't. <laughs> it will depress you. Ah, there's a section called Space Physics and the new. Yeah, space, whoa, what's that about? It's about satellites, one sentence. Satellites, um, when they go slower, they change the radius of orbit. And that's it. So nothing about geostationary. Yeah, so a bit depressing. Um, they have got um, oh, electromagnetic waves on radio. Students need to know about the uses of X-rays and gamma rays and and radio, they need to know that radio is used for radio and television. And that's it. Shaking your head, yeah. yeah. So there was a time when they needed to know about FM and AM, about the ionosphere, but that's gone. But black body radiation is in the syllabus. Uh, perfect black bodies is actually mentioned. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking Usain Bolt or, or Mo Farah. No. <laughs> you have to convince the students that the white sun, our sun, is a black body. Good luck. Yeah. OK. So you think, yes, educational tool. Yeah, we'll have some of that. So um, yeah, so you've got the temperature. Page down. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> so it's not running PowerPoint, it's uh, just the slides. Okay. So you get the temperature graphs of the different panels there, and you can see uh, the difference between the uh, shiny and the black. Uh, where's the shiny? Where's the white? This is um, a variation because um, you get the silver hotter than the black surface. Yeah, what's, what's going on? If you want to know the reason for that, I can explain it to you afterwards. It's quite complicated. I had conversations with um, Mark Spencer, who wrote the handbook for this, and uh, 
So as you can imagine, it's not straightforward, but it is uh, really good on the FunCube satellite because not only is the radiation being absorbed, when it goes into your clips, it's emitted. Yeah, so you've got both. With Leslie's Cube, which actually gets mentioned in the specification, you know, use this to show the students, it's just emission, isn't it? It's not absorption at all. So FunCube, you think, oh yeah, it's got both. It's all about thermal equilibrium. Let's use it. So the chap on the left there, he, uh, he works for Pfizer, and they do what's called lab in a box. They, do, um, they can provide schools with expensive equipment like infrared cameras. And um, we said, well, how about a space lab in a box? So they uh, paid the money to buy the dongle, the antenna, and a dedicated laptop. Yeah, pretty good, eh? So, yeah, so the lady at the back there is um, a STEM organiser. And these two young teachers uh, said, um, you can use our walkie-talkies in lessons. Yeah, OK. So we had teacher training sessions to, to uh, publicise this. And uh, there's a lady holding the cube. Here is uh, my version of the Leslie Cube. It's a baked bean tin. Don't laugh. <laughs> baked bean tin. One side coated black. And it's, it's very effective. Put hot water in, and both at the same temperature, the black is emitting more heat radiation. So how much does that cost compared to 40 pounds for 50 pounds for a Leslie Cube? That's a heat plate. You hold it uh, near to the face of the pupil. Uh, you've got the black side and the shiny side, and they can really feel the difference between the two. OK, so uh, were they interested? Yes. Uh, yeah, sounds all very interesting. Uh, but I think it would only be good for the G&T club. What's that then? Gin, gin and tonic? <laughs> Gifted and talented club. After school club. So there wasn't much interest. Right, so scroll down a little bit. Yeah, so uh, back in uh, March last year, Tim said, would you like to speak to me whilst I'm up in space? So uh, was it, uh, about 200 schools applied the first stage. Then it was um, down to 60, uh, 60 schools. And finally, 10 schools, of which, let me scroll down a bit. Hang on. That's it. Lovely. So that's Wellesley House School in Broadstairs, very close to, uh, to where I live. And they have a science teacher there who is really keen. And she, came, she brought her pupils to the Senate Observatory, where I volunteer. So I, I thought, yeah, she's the right person to go for this. And uh, they got through. We didn't think we would, because it's a prep school. Uh, so. Yeah, but we did, because we said we'd involve all the local schools. OK, so really exciting. And then uh, December, up he went. And the whole school and other schools came along to watch the launch. And it was amazing. All right? uh, it was an you know, exciting event. They had uh, TV cameras came in. So that was uh, really good. The lad, uh, the lad there, uh, he's in the GB1 SS video because he went on to get his license. So uh, the first uh, contact was at a fairly convenient time. A lot of the contacts were uh, um, half term or early in the morning, no, uh, late. <laughs> so this one was convenient. So these are infants. So were they six or seven year olds? So they're holding uh, the handhelds and they listen to Tim. So that's the first uh, thing we did, leading up to the contact. All right. Uh, now this one, get it in the middle. All right. Oh, <laughs> hang on. Use the arrow key. All right. Get there. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, da, da. <laughs> Oh, no. Excuse me. I have to get this working. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right, we'll go for that. That's um, this one here. 
is um, when Tim went over in the evening at six o'clock and we saw him, it went right across the school and we heard him as well. And uh, Kieran tweeted uh, how amazing that was and it was, it was quite something to see and hear him at the same time. Right, it's finished now. So uh, we got uh, uh, the pupils through the foundation course. He's not a pupil, <laughs> no. <laughs> right. So Ethan and Benny, they uh, did the foundation license and passed. Uh, e Ethan got one more point than Benny, so he got to do the first call and Benny uh, answered, asked the first question. Okay, so, so um, I went round to about 13 schools. Uh, now primary schools, as you can see there, little ones, um, they can stop what they're doing, you know. Uh, oh, sorry, 10 o'clock, the funky goes over. No, that's when we have French. And we don't have, uh, you know, physics till the afternoon. So primary schools are very flexible. And, uh, all right, so, yeah, they loved it. They, um, as uh, Steve was saying, the enthusiasm was amazing. They made models of the ISS. They kept a space diary. So there's a lot of interest in the Tim Peak mission. So as I say, went around to all these schools. We um, tracked the fun cube. Right, there they go. My turn, my turn. They all wanted to have a go at tracking the satellite. Couldn't see it, of course. Yeah? 600 kilometres up in space. Oh, an amazing little box sending a message down to Earth. OK, infants again. These four came to the school on the Tim Peak day. And <laughs> one of them said, oh, I'm so excited about seeing, oh, you know, melt your heart. Yeah, so excited. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, um, so when I went into schools, I set them uh, uh, some questions beforehand. Who was the first person in space? Who was the first woman in space? Who did the first spacewalk? So they had done a bit of homework beforehand. And... Uh, of course, it always came up the Russians, didn't it? Yeah, Russians this, and uh, showed them Valentina. Yeah, one kid actually had been to the Cosmonaut Expedition, exhibition and um, asked them, you know, what satellite's up there? Uh, oh, I don't know, don't know any satellites up there. Hands up, you've got Sky TV. <laughs> yeah, so they've all got that one. Yeah, so uh, thanks to Jim, uh, let's see, where is it? Yeah, that one, there's a pin. There's, um, every time I went to a school, there are Christchurch Primary School, uh, a greetings message. So uh, I said, there's a message from space for you. They didn't know what I was talking about. You know? This fun cube satellite was sending down this message continuously around the world, and it was for them. Uh, of course, as you know, amateur radio, anyone can hear what you're saying. <laughs> so this message was read all around the world and they thought that was amazing. Yeah. So thank you, Jim, for doing that. And uh, Fun Cube is right at the top there. I'm not going to film. The Fun Cube, oh yeah, you can see it there, right at the top. So the idea was that they appreciated for the Tim Peake contact, it would only be a few minutes. So the Fun Cube goes over and as you can see, you know, just a few minutes there. So we had to go out, the set time, right? Get the uh, angle and, and do the tracking, yeah? So we use N2YO, we, we use Heavens Above, all the websites to find out where the thing was, and they loved it, okay? Our little fun cube satellite, okay? So, so uh, we downloaded the temperature graph and we explained you know, what's going on here? It's getting hot at the 25 degrees. Oh, right down to minus 25. It gets hot again. What's going on? It's in the sun. It's in the shadow. So they worked out the period. These, this is 10-year-olds um, and younger. They worked out the period of the satellite from the graph. Yeah. And appreciated then that Tim experienced 16 sunrises and 16 sunsets a day. Okay, so the fun cube gave an excellent understanding of what it's like up in space. 
Okay, so, yeah. We talked about weightlessness. I asked them, why does the microphone, if I let go of this pin, it stays where it is? Right, if only. <laughs> right. So, why does the microphone stay still when you let go? All the kids in Thanet, where we are, know the answer, I hope. Right. <laughs> they remember. Shall I embarrass somebody? Uh, why is it not moved? What, what, what's going on? No, no. Okay. So, what I did was I led up to it. Right, let's scroll down now. I talked about... Um, uh, oops, up, 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 scroll. The uh, Principia, that's it, let's get it. Uh, set, right. So, yeah, um, Isaac Newton, um, gravity, and so on. We talked about this. I threw a tennis ball across the room, th threw it a bit harder. And I said, if I throw it harder still, it's going to go round the earth and hit me on the head 90 minutes later. So they understood that. And that's in Newton's book, isn't it? And I said, well, we haven't got a... Newton didn't have a cannon powerful enough to do that, but now we do. So we talked about launching from Baikonur and travelling at 17,000 miles per hour. Okay, so, yep. So they understood all about space. Uh, what happens if uh, Tim's spacesuit is hit by a micrometeorite when he's outside? It's, it's going to leak. His blood's going to boil. Of course, they love that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we showed them if you um, take up uh, warm water into a syringe and then pull the plunger up, you can see it boil. Right? The low pressure of space will cause uh, water and blood to boil. So, yeah. okay. So, um, and one sc school, um, yeah. Why does the uh, microphone not? So why does the mi microphone stay where it is? Uh, a lot of people say there's no gravity. So Einstein's theory of general relativity. Yes, I did that with a uh, year six primary school. Yeah, they understood it. I, uh, I uh, yeah. So mass distorts space time. So I took in um, this is uh, a little bin from Tesco's, one pound. This is a swimming cap, which I cut out and made into a membrane. Push it down with a screwdriver because it was quite tight. And you get gravity, right? distortion of space-time. You can see the gravity. How can you trick the gravity? How can you stop the marble from falling to the centre? They figured it out. Yeah, you just make it round and round. Yeah. Ah, yeah, so there you go, year six. This is my larger version. This is a hula hoop from a toy shop and um, a, a nice company up in Derby uh, gave me some offcuts, a latex rubber sheet. I said I wanted it for a gravity simulator. He said, yeah, yeah of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> Right, um, I haven't tried this before, but um, uh, I think Kepler is in the A-level section. Of, it's not, uh, it, it might be in the primary school. They need to know about Copernicus, of course, and that sort of thing. I don't know if Kepler's in there. Johannes. But, um, so the fun cube takes about 90 minutes. It's uh, 600 kilometres above the Earth's surface. Sky TV, 24 hours. It's uh, that distance, six times the Earth's radius, and the moon. I said to them, is the moon falling to the Earth? Ooh, right. 20, 28 days, and that's the distance to the moon. What's the pattern? Well, as you go further away, it takes longer. But it's not proportional, is it? So what's the pattern? Well, Kepler found it, didn't he? Third law, as you know, being satellite people, yeah, you all know that. Kept the third law. So uh, if you square the period and cube the radius, take the ratio, all the same. Kept the third law. 
and you could take it further and work out the mass of the Earth. All thanks to the phone cube. Did anyone else go? No, 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 just, just me then, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, right, what's this? Uh, let's scroll by this one. Uh, yeah, that's it. Eyebrows raised. Yes. Hmm? Bits missing. Bits missing, yeah. Uh, I've got a fantastic model of the International Space Station, which I take around. Better than the one they had on BBC Stargazing Live, I have you know. But um, that's the first one, the first module, right back in 98. Uh, and I emphasize then that we did have the Cold War, but now we have cooperation. Russia and America and Europe and so on, all the countries working together. That was last week. <laughs> <laughs> right. OK, that's it now then. So as you know, Japan and so on. Yeah. So cooperation, all the nations working together, none of this uh, Cold War. Um, so what now? Um, is, uh, you know, who's going to be next Tim Peake? You say to the kids, do you, do you want to be an astronaut? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you love space? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Will they be able to get into it? Well, this uh, young man will be the first Muslim in space. Yeah, you heard about him? No? He won a competition to go on the, yeah, on the uh, x Corps. Not for six months, but uh, you get a bit of space. So it's, the point I'm trying to make to the pupils is that space is accessible to them. Right? It's out there for them. You know, you don't have to be an astronaut. You can, uh, you know, do something to do with space. And uh, yeah, as you know, Kate. There is. Um, whoop, yep, she's got a call sign. She might make contact with Earth. Yeah. So. Uh, Yes, uh, a J Japanese friend taking a picture there. Yeah. So, team came down. They went up. So, you know, the space station is ongoing. The fun cube is still there. It will be up there for a long time, and we'll be able to, you know, download the data, work out the period, and get a better understanding of what it's like up in space. Okay. So. Uh, yeah. So. Not just um, space, uh, you know, around the Earth. You've got the, the Jupiter mission there. Uh, and uh, being an astronomer as well, you've got uh, Jupiter, Mars, Saturn, all visible. I say to the kids, you know, get out there and uh, look at the planets. So the Fun Cube, this is um, only last week's in the local paper, Planet Extra. Uh, nice spread, those pictures of the... Um, Pictures of the uh, uh, um, holding the antenna and the kids looking around the uh, laptop, uh, looking at the data as it came in, all, uh, watching the data come in and getting all excited. Uh, no errors. Yeah, yes, sir, it's all good. You know, they're getting really excited about it. Yeah, so it's great. So, yeah, so the Fun Cube is a great tool. It's uh, a. <laughs> It initially, you know, well, it can be used for heat radiation if uh, teachers want to get into the 21st century, forget the Leslie Cube, you know, use it, get out there, and, uh, and as I say, space is still relevant. Okay, thank you. Right. Well, thank you very much, John. Okay, that yeah. was Thanks for getting the app yeah, together yes, because yes. of <laughs> Windows. Do we have some questions yeah. about that educational chat? Okay, Jim, yeah? Jim, do you want the phone or can you shout? Uh, do you want to shout? Yes. Um, that, that, it's very interesting, all that, John, because yeah. uh, I've often wondered uh, <laughs> what the sort of result was. Oh, yeah, and yeah. The aim when we started five years ago yeah. uh, was dual. One was amateur radio and the other was kids' education. But a big thank you from me for sort of right. taking on the ground station or part of the ground station role. Right. Uh, the question is, yes. um, if you were doing another one, what would you do, another satellite, what, right. would you put different experiments on? Oh, right. Could we have done better or 
Uh, are there any limitations? Or well, I kind of hinted at uh, yesterday about different sensors. Uh, the radiation sensor would be a good one to have. You know, the cosmic rays, all right? Um, I, th I think there is um, something at the moment. Uh, what is it? Uh, um, Tim Plus or something. What, what is it? Uh, where there is some sort of sensor for measuring cosmic rays up in the space station. So, yeah, it'd be good to have it on the fun cube. Yeah. Anything else? Okay, any other yeah. questions? Right, if we break for lunch now, we're back yeah. at uh, 35 minutes, half past one then for the next session. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you.